Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and what's the first thing you think of when you hear the term comic book? You, you think of superheroes. If you, if you didn't think of superheroes, you're either lying or you're in a very, very tiny minority. So yeah, comic books are, they're basically superhero stories. Now, clearly, there are many, many comic books that are not. Heck, I covered one in a recent video about Brittany Griner getting her own comic. This is actually going to loop back to that, but I wanted to talk about something else first. So, I've got some pages pulled up and some stats I want to show you guys. So, October 2022 single issue comic book sales rankings. Now, this is from January 10th, you know, a little early last week. And the reason I want to bring this up is because, well, I got into a bit of a Twitter spat with the individuals behind the Brittany Griner comics. And I want to show you guys a little bit of information about the dying comic books and why the Twitter spat was so hilarious. So, let's go through here. Let's do the battle for the top 10. So these are the top 10 comics. You have Spider-Man number one, which makes sense. Number ones always sell more because they're number ones. That's, that's why comic book universes frequently reboot their series, their universes, to get number ones out there to generate sales because the comic book industry is dying. Then you have Amazing Spider-Man 11. Huh, that's another Spider-Man. Edge of Spider-Verse, another Spider-Man. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got in the top 10, we have three Spider-Mans. We also have Batman. We have Joker, the man who stopped laughing, which is, you know, another Batman tie. Uh, then we've got Crisis on Infinite Earths. That is a, a crossover. And we have a couple Star Wars. So in terms of the additionals, we have Hulk and Daredevil. We have two single you know, solo hero adventures that are in the top ten that aren't Spider-Man or Batman. Now, if we keep going, let's look at the top 25. More Star Wars. Let's see, we have Amazing Spider-Man 12, so more Spider-Man. Venom 11, which again ties to Spider-Man because it's Spider-Man. Uh, Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Oh, look at that, another Spider-Man. Uh, then from there we've got... Okay, so yeah, that's that's it. So we have three more Spider-Mans. Um, then we've... Let's see, Batman. Where did Batman go? Ah, there's Batman vs. Robin. Batman One Day Penguin. So even more Batman. We finally start to have some... X-Men and stuff like that in here, you know, a little bit of Thor, so basically starting to see more that's not just Spider-Man and Batman. Still haven't seen any Superman yet, except for his involvement in crossovers, and we can keep going, and it, it, it's basically more the same. In fact, we can go down to, uh, okay, so it's Battle for the Top 100. Once we get to the Wonder Woman franchise, 128, Wonder Woman 792, it's 128 in the top 200. That's it. That's the only Wonder Woman comic in the top 200 is Wonder Woman 128, and it's or Wonder Woman 792, and it's at spot 128. What about mantle swap titles? Well, Daredevil number four, Superman, Son of Kal-El. You have all these mantle swap titles. The only one in the top 10 is Daredevil, and then from that, everything is below the top 50. All right, what about legacy character titles? All right, so we have nothing in the top, uh, you know, 25. Everything in, in uh, 50 and below, or 50 and higher, depending on how you want to look at it. What about top female lead titles? The very first one is Poison Ivy number 5. That's at number 30. Then we have Punchline, the Gotham game number 1. And so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the top 100, and then all the rest lower than the 100 spots. All right, what about top minority leads? All right, we got Wakanda number one, another number one, a relaunch. This is one of five. So, and speaking of, it's number, uh, that's 66. At 86, we have Black Panther number 10. So, you know, pretty, pretty re recent series. Uh, and then we've got Miles Morales, Spider-Man. That's also a legacy character. That's, uh, or it's a, a mantle swap. Um, basically, all the minority lead titles, except for these three, are in the bottom 100 to 200 range. It's just not not looking good for comics. And then we can look at the closing of comic book stores. So here I've just got Google pulled up. Just just a general Google store. Uh, I Google comic book stores closing. Three comic book stores closed in December. One open. That's from January second, twenty twenty three. This is from twenty twenty. Five comic book stores announced permanent closure. Here's from twenty twenty. Why comic book shops are closing all over America. This is from August twenty seventh of 2021 the fate of the comic book industry the rise and fall july 19 2022 amalgam the first east comic uh east coast comic book shop owned by a black i assume that's a black man you know it's closing after uh opening in 2015 it closed in 2022 it didn't last but seven years 
I mean, this just goes on and on. Let's look right here. All-American Comic Shop after closing 40 years. Topeka Comic Book Store closing after owner's tragic death. That's a little bit different. Can understand that one. That's probably not due to the failing of the comic industry. Owner of Lee's Comics pulls the plug after more than 37 years. Inside Comic Book Shop closes. Holds huge sale. Like, just comic book stores are closing left and right and have been for the last three to four years. It is sad. And... This brings us back to the Brittany Griner debacle that I promised you all I would go over. So, if you don't know, I posted a video about Brittany Griner getting her own comic. If you haven't watched that video, you really don't need to to understand this, but I would definitely recommend you watch it. Just, uh, it might give you a little bit more clarity. That being said, I'm a pretty, pretty, uh, nobody. Don't have a whole lot of subscribers or followers on YouTube. Same with Twitter. So when I posted, are you kidding me? Brittany Griner is getting her own comic book now. Who do they think their audience is? There's stats to back it up. Comics aren't selling well, especially e even the ones from the big names like Marvel and DC. They're just not doing well. Comic book stores are closing, the industry's going down, even comic book movies aren't performing like they used to. Black Adam would have been a massive success uh, eight or so years ago. So they, however, decide to respond. Tidal Wave Comics, the individuals that are publishing the Brittany Griner comic. They told me the book is about her career, not politics. And as you can see, there's an audience for it because it's number one bestseller on Amazon. Now, it is number one new release in LGBTQ and biographies. Look, those are niche categories. There's nothing wrong with them as categories. Like, there's, uh, oh, darn LGBTQ category. No, that's not the case. Like, there's nothing wrong with those as categories. But let's acknowledge they are niche categories. Being number one in those... It really isn't anything special because it's not like you have a lot of competition. Unlike, let's like, say, Spider-Man, who has to compete with every other big-name superhero release from Marvel or DC. So, I told them, this is a very niche category with a medium that's already selling poorly. Velma was also the number one released animated show on HBO Max on Thursday. It was also the only animated new release on HBO Max on Thursday. So, yeah, it, it's you can't get an award or like, yeah, we're so great at what we do when you completely narrow the road on what it is you're doing. No, they respond again with some more categories. It's a mute point. You have your mind made up. Our bio comics sell well. Well, they say so well. I assume it meant so well. Also, just did Dave Grohl. They're number 14 in basketball biographies. Number 16 in LGBT biographies, but I thought that was what they were number one in, LGBTQ and biographies. So, eh, something doesn't add up. And number 22 in biographies and history graphic novels. Look, these are not, these are not the flexes you think they are. These are not Ws. If you were number 22 in biographies and history graphic novels, that should be your, you just dropped this. You're, oh, you're number 22 and you just dropped this? This is a biography graphic novel. This is a biographical and historical graphic novel. And you're only 22. You said here you're number one in LGBTQ plus biographies. Here it shows you number 16. Number 14 in basketball biographies. That's not good, especially considering it's a comic book. What, what do comic books cost? $3.99? $4.99? Let's say this one costs 10 bucks. Who knows? Point is, this is not the W you think it is. So this, I had two replies. Uh, the first one being, well, there's proof you didn't watch my video, considering I mentioned the Dave Grohl comics. So I guess you already have your minds made up as well. Which it seems like they do. They clearly didn't watch my video because I mentioned the Dave Grohl comet. I also tell them, also for future reference, it's moot point, not mute point. In front of you guys that are watching this that might say mute point, you are wrong, but that's okay. You have this time to correct yourself. It's moot, M-O-O-T, moot point may want to make sure your grammar is correct if you're going to be writing comics and advertising on Twitter as a company that makes a living off of, you know, writing. Now, I thought it would probably end here, but they had one more remark, and it's one that solidified a W for me, if I'm being completely honest. It's why I have copy editors. First of all, it is why. You mean that's why. You couldn't even get here. That's why I have copy editors is what you're supposed to say. But flat out saying, I'm an awful writer, that's why I have editors... Also not the flex you think it is. I, I am a bit dumbfounded, if I'm going to be completely honest. Look, this Brittany Griner comic, it, it's not winning any awards. Uh, it's clear they didn't watch my video because I, I went over what a mistake this was. Uh, probably the Dave Grohl comics don't exactly sell except to a niche audience either. But all in all, this video was to illustrate... First of all, my first foray into Twitter drama, so yeah, that was awesome. Um, but also that this company, they don't care. 
they're not looking for constructive criticism or any sort of advice from fans of the industry. They didn't even watch my video. If they did, maybe they would have heard some of the things I had to say, some of the criticisms, some of the acknowledgements, you know, just anything. But they didn't watch the video. That was very obvious in their response, considering they made it sound like I didn't address things that I absolutely did. And I also couldn't even write with good grammar. Comics are already failing. This is for all of you companies out there, not just Marvel and DC, anyone, independents, smaller companies. If you are a comic book company and you want to succeed, well, step number one is know your fan base. Um, it seems that that's something that so many individuals have forgotten nowadays. Comics are already failing. They have been for a while. They're not performing like they used to. The movies are even going downhill, both in quality and in financial stability. Stan Lee once said that comics are like boobs. They look great on a computer, but there's nothing like holding them in your hand. Well, while I do agree with him on a personal level, I guess a lot of people don't, because even comic book stores are closing in droves and have been for the last four years. So how is it that Tidal Wave comics are so entitled that they think that this is how you treat individual customers? Now, granted, I'm not a customer, but they don't know that considering they didn't watch my video. What if I was a potential customer and then this Twitter interaction of them commenting on my video without watching it drove me away? Well, there's 10 more bucks you won't be making. And in an economy like this, especially for comics, you kind of need every 10 bucks you can get. So my, my solution to this is uh, I would say don't support Tidal Wave Comics, but I don't really know anyone who is. They're not exactly a heavy hitter. I just thought the little bit of Twitter drama and then trying to flex over some awful numbers was honestly quite hilarious but uh you know i wouldn't jump in and, and start dogpiling these people i'm not going to ask you to go comment on this and then say mean things to them they got their l out of the way pretty early but if you want to follow me and and maybe be engrossed in more interactions like this by all means do so at bolt the word and please do subscribe to the channel i love growing it i'm really working on it in 2023 you guys can be there for it because mostly i cover nerdy news comics, video games, anime, the whole nine, and occasionally new movie and video game reviews. If that's something you're interested in, please do subscribe, because this has been Words of Paradise.